Hello, Joe here from Infinity of Tacoma. Today I'm going to tell you about this awesome 2020 Tesla Model S. This is the uh, performance model uh, with ludicrous mode. Uh, ludicrous mode allows this thing to go 0 to 60, 2.3 seconds. Uh, top speed a little over 160 miles an hour. Very, very quick. Uh, obviously, the performance might be a little bit overshadowed by the Model S Plaid which is a newer, faster version of the Model S. 0 to 60, 1.9 seconds on that one, but uh, 0 to 16, 2.3 seconds is pretty fast. Honestly, uh, when using launch mode, it's like having your own personal roller coaster. Uh, there's no hesitation. This thing is like a slot car. You just give it acceleration. You hit the accelerator, this thing just takes right off. There's no hesitation, no gear shifting, no engine driving. You just have instant thrust. Uh, ne 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 neck snapping acceleration. Um, so let's kind of take a look at here. So we have uh, the Model S performance of, of ludicrous mode, 5,180 miles. It's a local one owner clean Carfax vehicle. All right, so let's take a look here. So to access the different drive mode selections, you have this uh, right here. You have chill, sport, ludicrous, and ludicrous plus. Uh, you can control the steering mode, comfort, standard, and sport creep roll and hold and uh, the launch mode is pretty cool uh, this has an air suspension so when you put it in launch mode <laughs> little uh, easter egg there that's the James Bond submarine I actually think Elon Musk actually owns this um, <laughs> pretty cool but this has a uh, an advanced air suspension uh, looks like uh, obviously it shows you lots of data right there so when you put it in launch mode uh, basically, you uh, hit the brake and then you put your foot in the accelerator at the same time. You can feel the car kind of hunker down and then it'll say, you know, release the brake and this thing just takes off. And uh, it is rapid and intense acceleration. I can only equate it, you know, I've never done it before, but maybe being launched off a catapult off of aircraft carrier, like in a fighter jet or something like that. Uh, the acceleration is so rapid, it's actually can make you uncomfortable, especially if you're, <laughs> if you're not driving. Uh, it can, uh, it can make you a little bit motion sick if you're not used to it. That's how brutal and amazing it can be. But, you know, like I said, if you're not crazy about all that rapid acceleration, it's pretty easy to modulate the power or you can just change the drive mode right there. This, you can control the level of charging. Uh, when fully charged, this has a, a range of about 320 miles, 330 miles fully charged. Tesla does not recommend uh, you fully charge their vehicles to 100% when they're equipped with the lithium ion batteries. So you have this controller right here you can also control it on your app they recommend for daily use you charge it to about 80 90 percent uh, uh lithium ion batteries don't like to be charged 100 percent all the time so they get the longest battery life out of your tesla or any electric vehicle equipped with lithium ion batteries they don't recommend you charge them to 100 percent every once in a while like if you're gonna go on a long road trip that's fine to charge it 100 percent but like i said daily use 80-90% is what Tesla recommends, and with a 320 mile fully charged range, uh, you know, allows, uh, still, I would say probably at 80-90%, you're going to be like at 280, 290-300 uh, miles, so you still have a ton of range even with, you know, not being able to charge 100% all the time, but on top of that, you have Tesla's amazing supercharging network. Uh, you can use the uh, the screen right here to navigate the superchargers. There's two very close to us. You can get a full charge in about a half hour, 45 minutes. It's always good to navigate to the supercharger, uh, even though you know where it is, because it will precondition the battery for faster supercharging. Likewise, uh, you know, uh, the car will also figure it out. We're in uh, Tacoma, but if we drive clear across Washington to Spokane, no matter where you're going, you put it in the navigation system, and the car will figure it all out for you. It'll figure out uh, what superchargers you need to go to, how long to supercharge for. Uh, so it's gonna say, it wants you to supercharge in Cleelum. Um, you'll supercharge for about a half hour. Uh, you'll arrive with 27%. Then when you get to Spokane, you'll have about 13% range left. Um, and this one isn't fully charged. It's only at 221 miles. So uh, if I did fully charge it, I might be able to make it a little bit further. But like I said, Tesla will not leave you hanging. Obviously, you know, you can't go to a gas pump and fill it up, you know, of electricity. So when you do plan your trips, there is, you know, some, a little bit of a learning curve, but if you plan ahead, see where charging is, you should be able to pretty much travel anywhere in the United States with this vehicle utilizing the supercharging. And then you have also third party charging that you can use as well. All right, so much to talk about. Uh, 
pretty cool screen. You have this really crisp display that comes with premium connectivity. It's 10 bucks a month, allows you to stream music, uh, stream video, get these live Google Maps. You can also use your cell phone as a hotspot, but uh, for 10 bucks a month, I think it's well worth it. Uh, lots of cool stuff to talk about. Obviously, the majority of the functions are handled in the screen. Tesla is always uh, doing over their updates, improving uh, things, adding features. Uh, we have autopilot, which is traffic where cruise control, which allows the vehicle to brake and accelerate in its own lane. Uh, really is a godsend. I actually own a Tesla myself. We've been dealing with Teslas for a couple years. Uh, <laughs> being exposed to these amazing cars and the autopilot, finally, I bit the bullet and I bought one a couple months ago. But I can tell you, I'm so spoiled by these Teslas. If I have to, <clears throat> if I have to do a road, road uh, not a road trip, but if I have to do errands, or okay, sometimes we do road trips, delivering cars, picking up cars. Um, if we have to go on the road and I have to take a chase vehicle or go somewhere, I'm going to take a Tesla with autopilot. Uh, you know, driving and stop and go traffic. It really makes a big difference. Uh, you know, yesterday I had to go to uh, you know Burien and stop and go traffic in the rain. I could pretty much drive any car on the lot I wanted, but I took a used Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus, which is the exact same car I have. You figure, oh, I can drive anything I want. Maybe I want to drive a different car than what I own, but just the autopilot, how comfortable it is, the infotainment system, that's what I like, it's what I'm comfortable with. Maybe if I was like, you know, going uh, around Mount Rainier or like a fun drive, okay, take a sports car, take something, you know, fast and fun, but when it's driving on the highway, stop and go traffic, I want to be comfortable. I want to have my workload reduced with the autopilot and I uh, want to utilize that great infotainment system that I'm, uh, I'm familiar with. All right, let's keep this video rolling along. Uh, so 2020 is the last year of this particular generation of the Model S and they switched to the uh, newer generation, which the body on the outside looks pretty much the same, but they did a revamp on the interior. Uh, and now it fe features a uh, a yoke steering wheel, which not everyone's crazy about. We actually do have a 21 Model S with the yoke steering wheel, so uh, you can uh, sh you can kind of compare them both. Uh, if you come and take a look at both these vehicles, <laughs> somewhere close to, at the time of doing this video, obviously you could be watching this in the future on our YouTube channel, but uh, as, at the time of making this video, I have a 22 uh, Model S with the yoke steering wheel, and that's 2020. So if you want to compare the two, uh, we have them here for you. Nice big uh, cargo area, especially having the lift back versus a conventional trunk that gives you even more space. You can fold down the seats. You have a cargo area cover. And then there's also a little bit extra storage under there as well. Usually you'd have a gas tank there, but since there's no gas tank, it's an EV, uh, you have extra storage space. Really is a beautiful vehicle. We have these uh, upgraded wheels. Beautiful color combination. Uh, they really did a beautiful job styling the S. Um, and it's just functional. It doesn't even, uh, not just does this look like, not, not only is this a beautiful automobile, but it's actually one of the lowest drag coefficient vehicles of any production car in the last 10 or 20 years. Uh, so, you know, it's a twofer. You know, you have an absolutely beautiful, sexy design, but you also have a vehicle that cuts through the air, uh, you know, more efficiently than almost every, any other vehicle on the road. So I applaud Tesla in achieving that amazing. All right, and since there's no engine in the front, you have a frunk, which gives you more storage. It's also a safety feature uh, because you have a crumple zone that's about 60% larger than you would with a gas car with an engine in the front. So you have all this space to absorb crash energy and a frontal collision. Uh, the Tesla Model S is an amazing vehicle with its all-wheel drive system. This thing just grips and goes. It's a point-and-shoot hypercar. Uh, 0 to 62 seconds, so you're getting supercar levels of performance in a vehicle that's beautiful and efficient. So not only is this one of the fastest vehicles on the road, but it's also very efficient and it's going to save you money on gas. Uh, it's not going to get 12-15 miles per gallon like similar vehicles with gas engines that offer similar performance. It's uh, going to use electricity. Electricity rates are very low in the Pacific Northwest. And then on top of that, another thing is it's going to save you money on maintenance. It doesn't have an exotic supercharged twin turbo V8 or V12 engine. Uh, it doesn't have, you know, costly 30, 60, 90,000 mile services. It doesn't have, you know, carbon ceramic brakes, which are going to cost you $3,000 at 30,000 miles when you need to do a brake job. In fact, I've never had to do uh, 
brakes on any Teslas. We've had hundreds of them and we've never come close to doing brakes. You know, I, I, you'll probably get well over 100,000 miles out of your brakes. There's no expensive services to do. You're going from a vehicle, a gas car has thousands of moving parts. This just has dozens. So, you know, think about having a high performance BMW or Mercedes like an AMG and going in and having to do a 60 or 90K service, even a 30K service. It can cost thousands of dollars sometimes in vehicles like this. But this is a vehicle that offers similar luxury and performance, if not superior, yet uh, you know, maintenance costs are gonna be a drop in the bucket compared to a similar gas-powered vehicle that offers similar performance. Really is an amazing vehicle. Tesla has made a great achievement, I believe, with the Model S. Giant killing performance, amazing everyday comfort, amazing efficiency. One of the most advanced infotainment systems uh, out of any vehicle on the road. And on top of that, with the amazing mobile app, uh, that's another thing. Uh, over their updates, Tesla really uh, dominates over the updates. You know, I, I'm getting monthly updates on my Tesla. Every month I'm getting an update that's improving it, or I don't really see anyone else really doing updates and improvements at that level. This is like a smartphone on wheels. You just can't be a car company that manufactures hardware. You also have to be good at the software, and Tesla obviously has proven that. Uh, amazing product, come and take it for a drive, you'll be blown away and thanks for taking the time today to watch this video.